question about um, sex changes. Yep. Um, I, I'm assuming that that is a, um, uh, a soul error something, but what does it actually mean? Where does it come from? Um, now, this is getting into a really big area of discussion, um, which we can talk about. Um, myself and Mary have spent a lot of time discussing this together. Um, there are two types of pro processes going on with a sex change. Well, there's a lot more than that, actually. I think I've mentioned them in the previous thing I've said. Oh, yes. Notice under basic, what is basic sexuality? I've got unimpeded soul connection. This is the fourth main point down. Unimpeded soul connection with the spiritual and physical bodies is essential for sexual organ development. And then I've said severe prior generation, transgenerational emotional injuries regarding sexuality and self-identity affect the new soul's connection to the body, the production of hormones, chromosomal abnormalities in the genetic structure, and spirit connections attracted by parents' emotional condition. Now those four things that I've mentioned there affect how the sexual organs develop while you're in the womb. They also, so that there are, there are a lot of things going on during the time of gestation inside of the womb. Now, all of those things affect how the sexual organs actually de develop, and there are also um, many genetic abnormalities that occur due to emotions within the parents and the grandparents. In other words, transgenerational emotional injuries that impact upon the genetic structure physically, that impact upon the union of the sperm and the egg cell, that then impact upon the development of the child's body that's connected to the soul. Now, obviously, all of those problems can all be sorted out if we grow in our condition of love. So that's the thing to bear in mind in all of those things. Rather than discuss every single one of them, um, when it comes to sex change operations, there's usually two main factors driving them. One is that they have chromosomal abnormalities, and then they have to choose a gender. Now that only happens, I think there's only 600 reported cases in the world today of that occurring. So 606 billion uh, reported cases of that actually occurring, which is, uh, which is a very minor amount, obviously. And that just shows you how much the genetic structure must have been manipulated by parental injuries in sexuality. There are quite a lot of people looking for sex change operations compared to that. And the reason why that often, that often is occurring is because of heavy spirit influence from the moment of, of conception. For instance, many people have a spirit connecting to them at the moment of conception that the parent's emotional condition can't prevent. And the spirit is actually of a different gender than the person themselves. So in other words, I'm a, male, I'm a male just incarnated, and I've got a female spirit, a young female spirit, maybe, connecting to my body from the moment of incarnation, or soon after. And my parents' emotional condition didn't prevent that from occurring. And so now, when I'm born, I'm, I'm a male, but I've got heavy female spirit influence trying to use my body through, you, to, to interact with the earth through me. Now that causes huge emotional problems from that day onwards, from the time of conception onwards really. And so I, I may actually grow up, be a male, four or five years old, thinking that I'm a female because of this heavy mediumistic connection that I have with a female spirit. So can you see how like, just the emotional conditioning can modify lots of different things? Now, if I'm into my teens, I'm going to be very, if I'm still this heavily connected to this female spirit, I'm going to be very disappointed with my body's development and start wanting to cut things off and replace them with other things, for example. Right? So um, what I've found is that many people I've met who have uh, desire for sex change type operations are heavily mediumistic and are heavily influenced by spirits motivating their choices. And unfortunately, with all the psychological testing, you can't test for that. Because they feel they're female, they've got this strong female entity connecting through them right from the time they even were, were, were um, perceived. And so you imagine that. 
So every psychological barrage that you can aim at them, you'll come back with, they feel they're female. And so they go ahead with the sex change operations. Unfortunately, it confuses them at the time of their passing. Because when they pass, the spirit connection separates automatically. And so now they're in this quasi, very difficult place of no longer feeling they're heavily female anymore, but can, you know, realizing they're male, realizing how the connection occurred, it's a very, very distressing place for many of the spirits who pass in that state. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, that's a short explanation of a very long question, actually. Carol, thank you. Jay, there's, there's, you say there's only about 600 in the world of children that are born with bisexual reproductive disorder. Hermaphrodites, yeah. I, as a young nurse, like, in a couple of months period, in yeah. the hospital, I saw probably about five, and then they're, they're hidden away, and they're operated on. Well, I, I may be wrong because I've just gone by the statistics presented, yeah, I don't and, know that and a lot of them might be hidden. Yeah, so. because these children were just very um, stealthily nursed for a couple of weeks and operated on a decision had yeah. to be made by doctors and parents as to what, what will we make them. Yep. You know, where do they stand in all this? Yeah, it's a very poor decision, actually. To, a decision should not be made, actually, at that point. Because it, it creates... And the decision is actually being made because of the injuries of the doctors and the nurses and the parents and all of that, the emotional injuries, regarding sexual identity. Because if they realise that, hang on a sec, obviously this person has two types of sexual organs um, and, and they then went down the road of right. There's something going on at the soul level here, parents and everything, so we can't al allow the parents to make the choice really as to being operated on this person. This person really needs to be making their own choices. Now even with that, I read some things up about some hermaphrodites who were born with uh, an XXXY chromosome. They grew up, but they were abused by men sexually because they had both se men and female or sexual organs. They were abused by family members, mostly men. In one case, we read they were abused by men and women in the family. Now, how confusing are they? Are they how confused are they going to be sexually? So, so this person didn't do anything. Like they, they didn't have their organs cut off or, or replaced, which is a good thing, I believe and they were left to develop. Now, if they developed in divine love and became at one with God, by the time they'd be at one with God, they'd actually be healed and their body would reflect their soul's true gender. So that would all happen automatically. So there is no need to go cutting off things and, and, and hiding them even. And we only do that because of the emotional injuries that are in the community and in the persons, you know, the parents and, and others, that are then imposed upon that child. Which, ironically, are the same emotional injuries that created their condition. Mm 